are in the middle of a little strawberry patch here and students are picking the strawberries. It's a Wednesday morning and in about an hour or so the Davis Campus Farmers Market will be starting and we will be selling these organic strawberries and a bunch of other produce that we have. Each quarter, up to 60 students at the University of California, Davis, work or volunteer at the Four Acre Market Garden, where they learn basic organic farming skills. Some of these students hope to start farming operations of their own someday. Others are interested in soil science or even seed genetics. But all are aware of the pressing need to find new ways to farm more efficiently. There's a growing population. We're going to need to figure out how to produce food in a sustainable way to feed all of those people. Um, and it's not just agriculture, it's food access, it's health, it's nutrition, it's all of those things. In 2010, nearly 15% of American households, or 48.8 million people, at some point didn't know where they'd get their next meal. It's called food insecurity, and it's on the rise. At the same time, the United Nations predicts that our global population will hit 9 billion people by the year 2050. And while it will be a challenge to grow enough nutritious food, it could also be a challenge to find and educate enough farmers to meet the demand, as an overwhelming number of them are close to retirement. To top it off, agriculture has a considerable environmental footprint, pressing researchers to find ways to reduce the effects of farming while increasing the amount of food produced. The challenges and the opportunities that we have around sustainable agriculture going into this current century are about how do we provide food, but how do we do it in a way that is good for the environment and good for people not only now, but, but you know, forever into the future. Sustainability, that's what it comes down to. The ability to produce more food more efficiently while also caring for the land. It's such a pressing issue that in 2011, UC Davis added a new major called Sustainable Agriculture and Food Systems, focused on teaching the social, economic, and environmental impacts of agriculture. A few years earlier, in 2007, the university launched the Agricultural Sustainability Institute, which includes a 20-acre student farm and a long-term research facility called Russell Ranch. The idea is to be a hub for all of our activities in research, education, and outreach about agriculture and sustainability. And the mission is really to ensure the vitality of agriculture today and for future generations to come in California. All organic, market garden, ecological garden, my house. Mark Van Horn is the director of the student farm, which includes the market garden as well as an ecological garden and a children's garden, where an estimated 50,000 youngsters have learned about agriculture over the years. Go ahead and pinch this stem and then pull with your other hand. Children that get involved in growing healthy food are more interested in eating healthy food. If they grow things in the garden, they want to eat them, they want to share them with their families. Van Horn says getting younger people interested in agriculture will lead to increased awareness of the challenges farmers are facing and the importance of knowing where your food comes from. Many agree that society is more removed from their food sources than ever before, but also more interested in how and where it's grown. And they always sell out. Everybody loves our strawberries. That has resulted in the field to fork movement and the focus on sustainability. At UC Davis, it has meant growing interest in agriculture from students like Kaylee Winston Corrin, who moved here from Los Angeles. I feel like people from where I'm from don't farm or really think about where their food comes from. It's kind of humbling, like working here and seeing the effort that gets put into making our food. Should I just rinse that off? Yes. Yeah, give it a little squirt with the hose. Students here help live the field to fork concept by planting, growing, harvesting, and delivering produce that is then served on campus, sold at the farmer's market, and distributed to faculty and staff through community-supported agriculture boxes. Are these bags ready to go? I think yeah. so. Okay. Very briefly, in 12 words or less, describe what your system is. But creating the next generation of ag experts who can tackle the many issues involved in farming today... How should we kind of approach this? ...is a complex matter, one that's overshadowed by a growing population and shrinking number of farms and farmers. I'm actually moving to D.C. I'm hoping to do food policy or food access work for a little bit. 
Genevieve Lapari is one of the first students to graduate from the new Sustainable Agriculture and Food Systems major and is planning a career in agriculture, just not the type you typically would think of. From agribusiness to finance to politics, the food system touches many parts of our lives and our economy and requires many different skill sets. An estimated 200 careers today involve agriculture. I think that if you really want to make change, especially in the food system and in a lot of aspects in our world, that you really do need an interdisciplinary sort of approach. It's a system of problems, so you need a systems approach to solving them. One approach can be found here at UC Davis's Russell Ranch. It's a unique 300-acre long-term research facility that's dedicated to comparing different farming practices and discovering which methods are most sustainable. So we're comparing organic, which um, has inputs of manure and cover crop as sources of fer fertility and doesn't use synthetic um, pesticides. We have conventional, which uses synthetic fertilizer inputs and does use pesticides. And then we also have a, a system that's in between. We call it a mixed system. So you're a little short compaction though. Three centimeters you don't ever worry about. They're measuring things like yield and profitability, soil property, greenhouse gas emissions, water, and use of fertilizers and pesticides. All have faced some level of controversy and will require extensive research to find answers. At Russell Ranch, that research will span 100 years. It's called the Century Project, and it's currently in year 18. Is this the fertilizer in here? It's in here. It's liquid fertilizer. And um, this little pump pumps it into the line. And this line, that's where the water is flowing to irrigate the tomatoes. Drip irrigation allows less water to be used, creates no runoff, and the fertilizer goes directly to the plant. Considering water quality and quantity is a growing concern, a lot of his focus is on farming methods that will use it more efficiently with less harm to the environment. Our main finding was uh, that we have less uh, greenhouse gas emissions on the drip with drip irrigation. These findings are still in their infancy, but will hopefully lead to farming practices that both increase yield, enough to feed 9 billion people, and protect our planet planting hedgerows and wildflower strips in these areas. Kate Scow knows better than most the challenges in feeding a growing population. She's done extensive work with farmers in Uganda who face extreme food shortages and poor farming conditions. She acknowledges the need for a variety of experts to work together to truly improve sustainability. There's a, a strong international focus at, at Davis and people have been working for, for many years throughout the world. Nobody can be the, the single-handed Lone Ranger sustainability expert. It's all about being able to work with other people in teams to create solutions. It's a belief that's shared by students as well as faculty. A lot of the papers that I find when I do my research come out of UC Davis. Graduate student Graham Savio is majoring in international agricultural development and sees the potential for fixing the food system in the ability to share knowledge both at UC Davis and abroad. I'm heading to East Africa, so I'm, I'm going to work with farmers there and work with identifying farmers who are already being really successful. Even those farmers who have found success are also likely to find increasing sustainability challenges in the years ahead. Challenges that include water supply, pest control, climate change, and energy. There are issues that have the potential to dramatically change our environment and our ability to feed 9 billion people. If we're talking about increasing food production by another 70 or 100 percent over the next two generations, I don't think business as usual is going to get us to where we need to be. I think we have uh, an enormous challenge uh, lying ahead. We already are, are coming up with better ways of managing nutrients, managing water, and we have a challenge and, and I think we're going to meet it. It means that uh, your, your great, great grandchildren are going to be able to farm successfully and that the environment that they farm in is, is the same as what you have received from your grandparents. So taking care of the land. Taking care of the land and the planet. There he goes, there he goes.